Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are gonna be doing the second to last update of the year. In today's update, we are gonna be doing an update. Now this is actually the second update I've ever done on this airport, which technically means this is a series from now on, but this is Newark International Airport. And as this is a suggested update, we are joined by guests. Now this time, we are joined by three guests, which is the most we've actually ever had in an update. So starting off, we have Aviation.mco, also known as Ben. Hey. We then have Citrus Aviation. Yo, what's up there? And finally, we have Mile High Aviation, also known as Preston. Hey guys, what's going on? All of these guys do indeed have sub goals. Both Ben and Citrus uh, do have a sub goal of 1K by the end of the year. And Mile High has a sub goal of 3K by the end of the year. So if you would be as kind enough to uh, maybe just check out the channels, I'll link them at the end of the video and in the description. If you think they deserve a subscription, then maybe you can subscribe. But without further ado, we're just gonna get on with this update. Here we have a British Airways Boeing 780. 87-9 this will be departing out to London Heathrow and the next here here we have a United 787-9 in the new livery uh, he's just taxiing out to the runway for a flight out to Tokyo Narita and starting off in terminal A for the Newark Liberty International Airport update here we have a United Airlines CRJ 550 it's going to be heading out to Bangor Maine and if you're wondering why um, United has aircraft at terminal A is because Terminal C, where United is primarily at, the the only regional flights that are there are the E-Jets, like the E-170, the E-175, the, the other CRJs and the E-145s are out of Terminal A. It's because of the gates are like smaller and they're like um, well equipped for um, smaller flights like that. Next up we have this United CRJ 550 operating as a Dash 700 because they don't operate out dollars yet. This guy will be heading out to Montreal in the beautiful country of Canada. For all those of you who are very sad about your candidate losing, feel free to move to Canada on this flight. They've got a great wind toss there. Next up, we have United Express CRJ 550. This will be heading out to Burlington. And next here, we have a United Express Dash 8 200. Of course, these are retired. These are long retired. These actually retired back in January of 2018. So almost an entire two years ago. The reason why I have these in this update is I've made it a point um, that I'm going to include these in any United Hub update that I do. So that includes Washington Dulles until Gemini Jets or somebody releases either a CRJ 200 or an ERJ 145. But this particular Dash 8 200 is going to be heading out to Grand Rapids, Michigan. And to finish off um, the regional section for Terminal A, we have a United Airlines Q200 heading out to Madison, Wisconsin. Right here we have a JetBlue Airbus A320, very gorgeous livery, and this will be heading out to Orlando in about 40 minutes. Next up here we have a JetBlue A321, uh, he's just getting loaded up for a flight out to San Francisco. And next we have a JetBlue Airways Airbus A321 with service to Los Angeles. Los Angeles, San Francisco and I believe San Diego are part of JetBlue's um, new like, like they have mid service on those flights. Um, it's from JetBlue's uh, Newark Focus City expansion that happened earlier this year. Next up, we have this beautiful Air Canada E-170. This is the stressed E-170 with the older winglets. Gemma Jet to get that right. And uh, this guy will be heading out to Toronto or CYYZ. Right here, we have a American Eagle CRJ-700. This just arrived in from Chicago O'Hare. And next up here, we have an American One World 737-800. He's about to, uh, he's just getting catered up for a flight out to Dallas, Fort Worth. And to finish off Terminal A, we have an Alaska Airlines Boeing 737-800 in delivery. It's going to be heading out to Los Angeles, California. Terminal A was completed in 1973 and it has four levels. Terminal A handles only domestic and Canadian flights served by JetBlue, including flights to the Caribbean, Air Canada, Air Canada Express, Alaska Airlines, American Airlines, American Eagle, and United Express ultra short haul flights. And Terminal A ticket counters are on the top floor, Baggage carousels are on the second floor and parking is on the first floor. There's one United Club in Terminal A's second concourse. Gates and shops are on the third level. Terminal A is the only terminal that has no immigration facilities. Flights arriving from other countries cannot use Terminal A, except countries with U.S. customs pre-clearance like Canada. Although um, international flights depart from Terminal A, like flights to the Dominican Republic. Terminal A has three concourses, and they are all not connected together post-security. So you'll have to, like 
we clear security to go to another concourse. All right, starting off here at Terminal B, we have this gorgeous Spirit A321 who will be heading out to Atlanta Hartsfield Jackson International Airport. Next up, we have a Spirit Airbus A321. This will be heading out to Cleveland. And next stage is getting fueled up. We have a Sun Country 737-800 in the old livery. He's going to be heading out to Minneapolis. And next we have a Frontier Airlines Airbus A320. It's getting ready for his flight out to Denver. Next up, we have this gorgeous Delta 737-900 in the CE Woman livery. He will be heading out to Atlanta Hartsfield Jackson International Airport. Oi, my amazing airport. Right here we have a Delta Airbus A321. This just pulled into the gate from Salt Lake City. And next up here, we have a Delta Connection CRJ200. He's going to be heading out to Cincinnati. And continuing on with Terminal B, we have an Aer Lingus Airbus A330-300 in the delivery, getting ready to head out to Dublin, Ireland. Next up, we have this gorgeous Lufthansa A350, who will be heading out to Munich. Right here, we have the gorgeous Swiss Airbus A330-300. This will be heading out to Zurich. And next day we have a Scandinavian A350-900 in the new livery. This aircraft looks amazing. Um, this is going to be heading out to Copenhagen. Now one little uh, shout out that I do want to say um, is a YouTube channel called Bjorn Pilots. Now Bjorn is spelled B-J-O-R-N. It's a Scandinavian word. I believe you pronounce it Bjorn. I'm not really sure. Uh, but he's called Bjorn, Bjorn Pilot. Um, and he actually, he's a pilot for Scandinavian on the A350 and A330. Um, I've been watching his videos, he's got around 50,000 subscribers um, and he makes very like raw videos on board the A350 and A330, they're, they're really interesting um, and so if you haven't seen him I would definitely recommend uh, checking out his channel. As I said he flies the A350 from uh, Newark. He's made quite a few videos from Newark um, in the A350 and A330 and even going back to the A340 as well. Um, so if you haven't seen him I would definitely recommend his channel and next up we have an austrian boeing 767-300 getting ready for its flight out to vienna austria next up we have this Turkish airlines boeing 787-9 he'll be heading out to istanbul and this is to be a brand new route that will be starting january the 1st 2021 so it's very awesome to see Turkish airlines add new work service to the network right here we have the gorgeous cafe pacific airbus a350-1000 which will be heading out to Hong Kong. Unfortunately, both the Newark and Washington Dulles route will be cut due to money problems and the coronavirus. So it does really um, make me sad to see that the coronavirus is affecting so many routes and airlines. Um, so yeah, my prayers go out to that airline. And that concludes Terminal B. Terminal B, just like Terminal A, was completed in 1973 and also has four levels. Terminal B is the only passenger terminal facility directly operated by the Port Authority. Terminal B exclusively handles foreign carriers and also handles flights from the Caribbean through JetBlue. Other carriers such as Delta, Delta Connection, Sun Country, Elite Airways, Allegiant Air, Frontier Airlines, and Spirit Airlines flights, um, and some of United's international arrival. Some international carriers are um, Aer Lingus, Air China, Air India, Austrian Avianca, British Airways, Cafe Pacific, and Didi, where they serve um, LL, Emirates, Eurowings, Ethiopian, Eurowings, Iceland Air, Lufthansa, Porter, Swiss, TAP, and I think Virgin Atlantic also used to serve um, Newark. In Terminal B, ticket counters are on the top floor, except for the second floor, Aer Lingus, Frontier, Delta, Iceland Air, and first floor, British Airways, Level and Spirit. Um, it's basically like basically like Terminal A, but it's just for international um, arrivals. In 2008, Terminal B was renovated to increase capacity for departing passengers and passenger comfort. And in 2012, Port Authority Executive Director Patrick Foyer said $350 million will be spent on Terminal B, fixing a bunch of um, the, the stuff that passengers have been complaining about, which is pretty cool. And starting off here in Terminal C now, we've decided we're going to approach this terminal a bit like Denver, how we kind of took a type of aircraft each. So I'm going to be taking all of the E-Jets. Preston is then going to be taking all of the 737s. And then um, Ben is going to be taking the 757s and 767s. And then Citrus is going to be taking the 777s and 787s. But starting off here, we have a United Express E-170. He's going to be operating a flight out to Kansas City. Behind him there, we have a United Express uh, E-175 in the old livery. He's going to be operating a flight out to Charlotte. Pushing back here, we have a United Express E-175. Uh, he's just about to head out to 
to Portland, Maine. Then the aircraft that's in focus now is a United Express E-175 in the new livery. He's going to be heading out to Washington, Reagan. In the middle there, we have a United Express uh, E-170 in the old livery. Uh, he's going to be operating a flight out to Dallas, Fort Worth. And then at the end there, we have another new livery, uh, E-175. He's going to be operating a flight out to Columbus. And then finally here, just taxiing, we have a uh, United Express uh, E-175 in the old livery. Uh, he's just arrived in from Milwaukee. Next up, we have a United 737 MAX 9. This will be heading out to Houston Intercontinental. It is very exciting that um, the FAA and Boeing have been working very hard to get the MAX back in the air and that the United States just released a ban on it. So it is very exciting to see the MAX back in the skies. Next up, we have a United 737-800. This will be heading out to Austin. Next up, we have a United 737-800. This will be heading out to Cleveland. Then right here, we have a United 737-800 heading out to Fort Lauderdale. Right here, we have a United 737-900. This will be heading out to Las Vegas. Then we have another United 737-900. This will be heading out to Seattle. Then right here we have another United 737-800, which will be heading out to Washington Dulles. Next up we have another United 737-800. This will be heading out to Fort Myers. Right here we have a United 737-800. This will be heading out to Boston. And continue on the narrow body section of Terminal C. We have a United Airlines Boeing 757-200 in the Hurt Art Here New York livery. It's going to be heading out to San Diego for its almost six and a half hour flight, which is honestly like a really, really long flight, but it's an awesome flight. Like the flight length is really good to like I enjoy 757. And next we have the California Her Art Here livery and it's going to be heading out to San Francisco, California. I know this has nothing to do with the Her Art Here liveries, but the Star Wars livery is going to be repainted in 2 weeks. Um you know, major F for that. And after that, we have another United Airlines Boeing 757-200, this time in the normal livery. This one's going to be heading out to Orlando, Florida. And to finish off this row of amazing 757s, we have a United Airlines Boeing 757-300, and it's going to be heading out to Chicago O'Hare. The 757-300s, um, I'm pretty sure none of them have in fly entertainment, but the 757s, they all do, except for like a select few. And I'm pretty sure those have been retired or they're stored right now, but um, almost all of them have in-flight entertainment. The Legacy United 757s, the ones with the Pratt & Whitney engines, have um, are not returning. It was just announced by United like a few weeks ago that they are not returning to the fleet. So, um, those were Legacy Uniteds before the whole merger with Continental, so now all the 757s that remain are ex-Continental aircraft. And starting off with the heavies, we have a United Airlines Boeing 767-300 came in from Los Angeles this morning and is going to be heading out back to Los Angeles. Uh, fun fact, I actually flew this flight on the red eye from LA. If you want to go check that out, it's the most recent trip report uh, that's on my channel. And next we have a United Airlines Boeing 767-300 is going to be getting ready for its flight out to Geneva after coming in from Sao Paulo. And the final 767-300 of the bunch is going to be heading out to Barcelona today after coming in from a flight from Houston Intercontinental. And then we'll have to finish off the update we have some wide boys we have some triple sevens and 787s some gorgeous aircraft here starting off with this triple seven 300 er in the new livery it's gonna be heading out to london heathrow this from my understanding is a twice daily or three times daily flight and the triple three is one aircraft that operates it the other aircraft you'll see a lot on this route is the triple seven 200 next up we have a boeing 787 10. This guy will be heading out on the brand new route to Johannesburg. Now, United is scheduling this to be on a 787-9, but due to Aviation 18's current 787 fleet limit, please make some more 787s, General Jets. Um, these, we only have a few aircraft that we can use, including a Dash 10, so we're going to use a Dash 10 for now because it's close enough, and it wouldn't surprise me if that route gets upgraded to a DAS-10. Next up, we have this gorgeous United 77-9 in the new livery by NG Models. This guy will be heading out to Delhi, which is an upcoming brand new service, just like the Johannesburg flight will be starting next year. 
and this is in particular to compete with Air India after the collapse of Jet Airways. A lot of airlines are hopping into the Indian market, including United. And uh, United will be starting this flight on July 10th and will be on the 77-9. This is going to be one that we configured 77-9s will to be intended for ultra long flights. And this will be one of the longest flights in the world. Next up, we have a 787-10 in the old livery. This guy is here for my flight from Paris. Next up, we have a United 777 300 in the old livery. This guy will be heading out to Mumbai. Next up, we have a United 777-200, and this guy will be heading out to Frankfurt. This is in the gorgeous new livery. And then finally, the last aircraft for this update, we have this gorgeous United 777-200 who will be heading out on the San Juan route. This is one of the unique routes out of Newark. They fly Newark to San Juan daily on the 777-200, which is a pretty cool route. And that concludes Terminal C. Terminal C, designed by Grad Associates, was completed in 1988. Terminal C is exclusively operated by United and its regional carrier United Express for their global hub at EWR. The terminal has two ticketing levels, one for international check-in and one for domestic check-in. The main terminal building for Terminal C was built alongside Terminals A and B in the 70s, but lay dormant until People Express Airlines took it over as a replacement for the former North Terminal when the airlines hubs there outgrew the old facility. Upon opening, Terminal C had 41 gates, one departure level, one arrivals level, and an underground parking garage. Terminal C actually used to be operate, like occupied by Continental. Um, EWR was a Continental hub, and then when the whole merger happened, um, Conten- uh, United, you know, inherited uh, EWR from Continental. So that's why um, you see a lot of Boeing, Boeing planes based out of Newark, and you barely like see any Airbus because like Newark is like you know it was a big hub and it was mainly a bunch of Boeing planes. So when you go to Newark, you'll, you'll see a lot, a lot, a lot of Boeing planes. Um, terminal C uh, is like the newest terminal all of all of them except for terminal terminal one is opening um, late 2021 so that will be replaced in terminal A uh, the gates as well as food shopping outlets are located like on a mezzanine level between the two check-in floors terminal C has multiple gates that can handle wide body aircraft and narrow body aircraft gates C123 and 138 have two jet bridges used for the Boeing 787 Dreamliner and Boeing 777 aircraft and during peak hours between 4 and 9, all gates are completely full and completely scheduled. During this time, gate availability often becomes scarce. So, like, whenever there's a delay, well, good luck trying to find a gate during these peak times. Even during the pandemic, I flew through Newark two times, and each single time it was really relatively busy. United uh, keeps things really busy. They have a lot of um, really interesting flights out of there. Like, if you're going to fly to LAX, like, out of the seven flights they have a day, there's a possibility you can get a 737, 757, or even a 76 and a 78. So there's a lot of stuff, a lot of movement going around in Newark, and out of all the um, United Hubs, Newark is my favorite, and then comes Denver. Denver and Newark are my two favorite um, United Hubs. The, in the C terminal, there are also Polaris lounges and United Club lounges for those business class passengers and those that have a pass. Overall, um, it's a pretty pretty amazing terminal. I prefer Terminal C out of all the terminals in UWR. And so yeah, that does conclude this update of Newark Liberty International Airport. I hope you did enjoy. Again, I will give it over to uh, both Citrus, Ben, and also Preston to kind of uh, conclude the update. Um, uh, but from me, this is going to be it. So I want to thank you very much for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one. Uh, thank you for watching this suggested update of uh, Newark Liberty International Airport, also known as EWR. Um, for those that don't know, EWR is a very, very busy airport. It's the third New York area airport. Um, I hope you guys really enjoy. Go subscribe to Citrus, Preston, um, and Aviation 18. They all have amazing content, uh, especially uh, Aviation News with Citrus, Denver International Airport updates with uh, Mile High, and coming soon, some Washington Dulles. Hopefully it's coming. It'll be soon with Aviation 18. Uh, go check me out for some reports. I got some interesting stuff coming out. I'm planning um, a trip with Aviation Malik on the United Airlines 737 MAX 9 now that it has been regrounded. I um, expect some pretty cool, interesting things, like, for example, the Delta 717 and United 757. So if you want to check that out, go ahead. Uh, check me out, subscribe if you like, and I'll see you in the next one.
Oh, I didn't want to thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I want to thank my High Aviation, Aviation MCO, and Aviation 18 for allowing me to come on the episode, and thank you Aviation 18 for being a platform for us to join you and for sharing our passion of aviation and model airports. Newark is an awesome airport, particularly considering that it was operated by several legendary airlines, including People Express, Continental Airlines, and now currently United Airlines as major hubs and focus cities. And with that being said, I want to thank you guys for watching. Have a great rest of the day. God bless. I hope you guys enjoyed this airport update. Make sure you are subscribed to Aviation 18 and you go ahead and like this video if you did enjoy. And check out Citrus Aviation and Aviation.mco. They have some very good content. And also, please check out my channel if you have time. I'm trying to reach 3K subscribers by the end of the year, so it would mean a lot if you went and subscribed to my channel. But apart from that, I want to thank you for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.